Greetings, people of Earth. Welcome back. My name is Jax. Um, for you, it's going to be like every other day there's a video, right? But I haven't done a video in probably a week and a half, almost two weeks. Um, it's been busy. There's been lots of farm work. There's been just stuff going on. Um, and if I'm being honest, I haven't felt especially productive um, in the traditional sense of productive and, you know, like the idea that I am constantly growing and evolving and changing and um, being productive in all of those areas. But looking back at it in sort of a top down or a rear view mirror kind of way, uh, a lot has happened and a lot of growth has happened. Um, I have been actually a lot more productive than I thought I was. And so that's why the title of this video is Growth comes when you least expect it or something like that. Um, I haven't figured out the title precisely, but it's to do, to do with the idea that growth happens when you're not looking. Um, and maybe it's a, it's similar to the idea of like a watch pot never boils. Like it, it, it always happens in the background or um, when you least expect it. And I think this is true for a lot of things in the universe. Um, I'm a big gym guy and I know for a fact that the vast, vast majority of muscle growth happens while you're sleeping. It doesn't happen in the gym. Um, that might help facilitate growth, but if you're not sleeping, if you're not eating properly, if you're not doing that, you aren't going to see any kind of muscle growth. Like it's just, it's not going to happen. And I think that's true for a lot of growth that we see in our lives personally, most of the time, you know, a lot of the growth doesn't actually happen when you make a mistake or you succeed at something, it happens when you look back at that thing and go, huh, how did that happen? Like, how did I make that mistake? Or how did that thing turn out so well? Um, and so the growth isn't actually occurring while the thing is happening. It's always in hindsight. It's always over time you see that growth. And I think that's very telling. And it's also very nice to know because if I'm being honest, we go through our lives always struggling and feeling like, oh, we're not good enough and, you know, we could be better and all of these things. But then when we look back in the rearview mirror, we can really appreciate how far we've come and how much growth actually did happen. Um, and so if you're ever feeling down about not being productive enough or not being, you know, achieved, well achieved enough, um, you just have to remember that a lot of this is happening in the background. A lot of this is happening in a way that you might not necessarily think of right away. Um, and so, I don't know, I think that's quite a relieving idea um, because this last two weeks, I haven't really gone anywhere. I haven't really done a whole lot. And yet it feels like a lot has changed. Um, not to be like dramatic or anything, but I feel like my personal growth and how I see the world has become a little more nuanced in a way that I like, not in a bad way, not in like a pessimistic way, but I just kind of, it's like I've kind of clicked into a, into a rhythm of like, oh, I get this. I understand what's going on. And, you know, I feel like I have a good path forward. Um, but none of it happened all of a sudden. None of it happened just like, boom, it was all kind of compounding over a large period of time where I can now look back and go, oh, you know what, this whole, the last two weeks have been really eye-opening to show me what I'm looking for, what I value, um, how my work is going, how my personal relationships are going. And yeah, it's just been, it's just been very nice, if I'm being honest, it's just been nice to know that the growth is there it's happening the change and maybe it's not necessarily growth but it is change and it is you know coming to a better understanding of the world around me and my interactions with it and my environment i think that's the best way to say it is i'm, I'm understanding my environment everything that is surrounding me in a much wiser way and just appreciating it as a whole system instead of just looking at the individual pieces. Um, 
So instead of just looking at the trees and the squirrels and the bushes and the flowers and the weeds and all of that, I'm just sort of appreciating the whole forest and the whole ecosystem and how it all kind of meshes and works together. Um, and I know it might, I hope it's, I hope this doesn't sound like confusing or weird or anything. It probably does, but that's kind of where I'm at at this point is just appreciating that sort of existence. And in general, it's just been very positive. And there was a, that was a big B. Anyway, um, that's, that's basically what I wanted to say is I hope that you don't sweat the, the small tribulations and trials and difficulties in your life because they do compound into wisdom and knowledge and experience. I was listening to a podcast recently where this educational um, teacher was talking about the way schools are set up and how we teach children. And what really struck me was she was basically advocating for teaching students what to think, you know, and a lot of teachers now want to teach children how to think and then just let them like run wild and think up all kinds of communism and whatever they want to think of. Um, and she was saying, no, like teach them what to think, give them the facts, give them the data, give them the you know, the when did World War II happen? Give them the who was Napoleon? Give them those ideas and what happened and they will figure out and process and synthesize and grow themselves. You know, you just have to give them the ability to do that and then they can go off and if they want to, they can create new ideas and all of that kind of stuff. And a lot of our great thinkers and um, people who had amazing concepts that changed our world. A lot of them were classically educated and then took that classical education and moved it further. You know, Sir Isaac Newton's a good example of someone who was very f grounded in the understanding of the world at that time and then completely revolutionized everything. And then another point I want to make about Newton uh, that kind of inspired this video is that from what I have read, um, Sir Isaac Newton obviously, you know, revolutionized our idea of gravity. His seminal work Principia was all about physics and sort of founding some of the basic laws of physics that we still, you know, hold to today. But he was basically hiding out from the plague. You know, he had had to kind of retreat from social life and go far away and was able to kind of process his ideas and thoughts and principles in a grounded, thoughtful way. And he was able to do that because the whole world had kind of stopped, which made him stop and made him grow and develop these ideas and then put them out there. So never feel as though you have to be out there every single day grinding and hustling and working so hard because True growth, like I said before, doesn't happen in the moment. You know, it is a compounding of knowledge and information and growth over time. It doesn't happen right away. You can't just read something and then instantly you're an expert on it and you have it all in your head. It takes your brain time to go over the subject, think about it, process it, maybe see its application in the real world a few times. And then you can call yourself a true expert or a sage when it comes to a topic or a concept because you've had this, you've had the knowledge, the initial knowledge growth or whatever it is. And then over time, you see its application in the real world. And that is the true creation of wisdom. It, it like there's, there's knowing all of the countries on the, on the planet and there's understanding how those countries work and how they see the world and experiencing them through time, right? Like those are two different concepts and I think we conflate knowledge and wisdom a lot of the time. Um, but really, I think wisdom is just knowledge plus growth, plus like time and understanding and nuance. Um, so never feel like you're being unproductive by just having a lazy day because your brain is always working. You're always coming up with concepts and ideas and your brain is constantly testing out these hypotheses and 
testing out these theories over time and watching and seeing things in TV shows, in real world encounters. Um, when you hear about some gossip with your friends or your family, um, your brain is confirming and disproving different theories and ideas that you have in your head and that contributes to wisdom. It's why older people tend to be wiser is because they have seen a vast, vastly greater sum of experience than any of us have. Um, so that's my two cents on growth and wisdom and knowledge and how sometimes you just got to take some time and think about things in a nuanced or a long form way without you know, beating yourself up about you got to be productive, you got to be grinding, got to be hustling. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think. This is kind of a little bit of a different concept for a video and a different concept for an idea. But I just thought it was a interesting, thought provoking thing, which is what I try to do. So thank you very much for listening and putting up with me. And I hope you have an amazing day, month, year, whatever you're having. I hope it's amazing. And as always, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.